All right, so we're going to begin with some of our review slash new material here. So remember here, we're, we're looking at embedded microprocessors here. So before we actually get in and dive into using the program that we're going to be using the PSOC device and actually start programming it, we should learn a few things here. Here, um, The first thing we're going to learn is we're going to learn some basics of uh, microprocessors. And when I say basics, we're talking very um, minimal basics here. Um, we're going to then talk about um, the C programming language. And this is really just a quick review. We should all be familiar with C programming at this point. Um, and then um, the other thing we'll talk about is um, assembly language or assembly code versus machine code. Now we're not going to talk about all of this in this particular video, but these are kind of the tasks we have to kind of get through before we're ready to really start um, diving into the program here. So first off, let, let's just talk a little bit about um, the overall um, architecture um, with a block diagram here um, of how this works. Now there's two um, main types of um, computer architecture that are, are used in this here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put both of them down here. So we have a block here. And this is my CPU, or my uh, microprocessor. So we know CPU central processing unit. So basically what there is, is there is some kind of control unit here. So I'll just say control. Um, and this control unit is basically what is going to kind of read instructions and send instructions to the proper location, things of that nature. So basically this is then connected to, and you may have covered this in other courses, this is a fairly common thing that you um, cover in a digital logic course is you need to have an ALU present. Um, and this is basically just an arithmetic logic unit. So it can do arithmetic and it can do logic. Um, and then we also have then, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail here later on, we have registers. And then the control unit, basically the ALU is going to send status messages to the control unit, and then the control is going to send what are called opcodes. Now some of this terminology you might not be familiar with and that's fine. Um, it's not that big of a deal. But we'll, we're going to get into this terminology a tiny bit. Um, and this is kind of how a CPU works here. But then what we have here um, associated with the CPU, we also have memory. Now most CPUs have some kind of um, memory already built in with them in the sense that you could buy one chip that would both have the CPU and some memory. And so this is basically instruction and data memory. Now the instruction That was a terrible line. The instruction goes here between these two devices. Um, actually, let me uh, do this a little bit better here. So it's going to go like this. And this is data.
So an instruction is basically a command of something I want it to do. For instance, an instruction could be adding. You know, So we want to add something. So the instruction is sent to the control unit that I want to add. And then that control unit sends the correct op code to the ALU telling it to add. That's where the op codes are, is they're the correct um, instruction to the ALU so the ALU knows what it needs to do. Okay, and then the status would be that the ALU would send back, okay, I'm done adding. Um, now, notice that the data flows in both directions here. Um, and then we also have then addresses here. Now, it's very important to understand how memory works. Memory has both, um, it stores data, but then every data location has an address. Um, and, you know, as an example here, um, just off to the side here, let's even just do this in a different color. Off to the side here, we might have, I like to just think of these as little blocks here, and these blocks store data. And we're going to primarily be using hexadecimal format for our data. Um, and so the data in here, for instance, might be 3F, um, 1A, 2.5, and FF. I mean, just random bits of data that I've put in there. I mean, it's kind of meaningless at this point. But then all of these are going to, this is all data that's stored in memory. So that's this data portion right here. But then these all need to have a location associated with it. And so the location would be, of course, the address. Um, and the address here, for example, would be, for instance, you might have 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like 1, 3, 4, 4. And then 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, three, four, five, because, you know, we, we go in order here, like increasing order. So, and then you would have, you know, continue on as far as increasing the addresses here of these. So 